Hello, and welcome to the Do More With Your Money podcast. I am your host, TJ Van Gerben, certified financial planner and huge money nerd. This podcast is an exploration of how people are using their money to not only build wealth, but ultimately live the life that they want to lead. My goal is to help you think differently about your money. At the end of the day, we all want to build wealth, but I think it's really important that we're doing it in a way that brings us happiness in the short term, because if you can't enjoy the journey, then there is no point in the destination. Your time is incredibly valuable, and I understand that. So I want to thank you for joining me today, and I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Hello, and welcome to episode nine. On today's podcast, we're going to talk about the future of retirement. As somebody who helps people plan for their financial future, the concept of retirement and that we stop working and plan for our financial future so that we have the ability to either choose what we want to do or do nothing at all is actually a relatively new concept, especially when you think about retirement as a society in regards to the history of mankind. You know, obviously, even a couple hundred years ago, people didn't think about retirement because there really was no such thing. It, you kind of just worked until you couldn't. There wasn't necessarily social safety nets in place like Social Security to provide you some bare level of income. You basically just worked until you died or you were unable to, and then you were supported by family members. And, you know, I'm sure if you go back throughout history and look at different societies, they handled this differently. But the whole concept of retirement, especially for kind of the masses, wasn't really a thing. Fast forward to the last hundred years, and we've been lucky enough as a society to increase our productivity, increase our lifespan and our life expectancy through technology, also increase you know, the the automation of things. And now we have very nice products for, in a lot of cases, very low cost. And so what has happened is we've been able to, since our life expectancy has gotten so long, plan for a time in our lives where we have the option to stop working. So if we think back to kind of the previous generation's like the greatest generation or even the baby boomers to some extent, what was very typical was having a pension in place through your employer where you contributed a certain amount of your salary and then after working there for a certain amount of years, you were entitled to a percentage of your salary based on a certain payout schedule. So they still have this for government employees to to some extent. So for example, teachers in Massachusetts, if they work X amount of years, they receive X amount of their salary. And there's a complicated formula behind that. And they're always changing the the rules to um, what you need to do to vest that pension. And so this made it pretty straightforward for people to retire because they didn't necessarily have to think about how much money do I have to accumulate to recreate my paycheck because I'm going to get this pension that is guaranteed. Now, we can talk about the guarantees of pensions because that didn't always necessarily work out, especially for private companies. But it, it was pretty easy to say, hey, I'm going to get you know 70% of my salary and I can live off that. I can plan on, I can plan around that. And then if we factor in Social Security, assuming that you also re- would receive Social Security, then that would replace another part of your income. One thing that people don't realize when it comes to Social Security is that is supposed to be a baseline for your retirement income needs. It's really supposed to replicate 40%. That's what the actual Social Security Administration says. It's supposed to replicate 40% of your um, pre-retirement Um, living expenses. So let's circle back to the pension aspect. So you didn't necessarily have to put a ton of thought into it, assuming that you were going to actually receive your pension. Now, there were issues where pensions were not properly funded. The actuaries, the people who price out the insurance or the the pension uh, didn't necessarily, they, they couldn't predict future returns because what happens with a pension is people are actually taking that money 
and they have to manage an investment portfolio, and then they have to factor in the withdrawals of the people who are in retirement and who are pulling from that pension. So even though it's risk-free, quote-unquote, to the people receiving the pension, there's definitely risk involved because the people managing that pension have to achieve a certain rate of return to make the pension sustainable. Now, they are if there are new people paying into the pension, that's obviously going to supplement the people that are withdrawing from it. And this is similar concept to Social Security, right, in the aspect that we all pay into Social Security and um, for the idea that we're going to receive that benefit as well. But it works a little different with the, with the federal government, right, because they have other sources of revenue. But with a private company, for example, this can be very burdensome, these, these pension liabilities. And a lot of kind of traditional companies have had issues funding these pensions and it really weighs down on the financials of the company. And so what happened was is there was a transition when people realized that funding pensions was harder than it seemed on face value. And so what they wanted to do is they wanted to transition the risk from the employer from an investment standpoint to the employee. This meant going from a defined benefit plan, which was the pension, right? You defined that benefit based on how much you put away and for how long you worked there to a defined contribution plan, which is now the traditional, if you think about it, the 401k. This is the most common form of defined contribution plan. There are other types out there, but for simplicity, think 401k plan. So with the defined contribution plan, it was on you, and it still is because it's it's the most common way to save a retirement now, to save enough of your salary, invest it. You have to choose the investment, take on that investment risk, and then you're left with a lump sum pile of money and you have to recreate your income if you want to retire. And so this complicated the idea of retirement a ton. Because you went from saying, I had defined benefit, I knew what percentage of my salary I could live off of, to saying, now I have this pile of money, and I have to withdraw from it at a rate that's sustainable, and I don't know how long I'm going to live. Because again, we're experiencing increased life expectancy, so, you know, when Social Security first came out, the life expectancy was, you know, 10 years beyond what... uh, when you started pulling from it. Now people are living into their 80s, their 90s, even their hundreds. And so they're pulling from that Social Security um, money when it was only intended for originally for maybe a decade a decade after you reached full retirement age. So with the defined contribution plans, it really changed the difficulty of retirement. And so this is where we're headed now with future retirement planning is as life expectancies increase, it's only going to become more difficult to have a high probability of success of making sure that your money lasts. And so how is this going to change the way that people think about retirement, right? Where I think our maybe our parents' generation or grandparents' generation, we had this idea of, you know, you worked at your job for 30 years and then you retired and you stopped and you did nothing. I don't think that's going to be the future of retirement. I think what is going to happen is people are going to change their expectations around what work involves. Because I think the goal is is that, yes, we want to save a large percentage of our salary if we can and invest that over a 30, 40 year time period so that we can give ourselves the option to start, stop working and we can go through financial planning process to determine, you know, what can I really withdraw from this portfolio and based on assumptions for rates of returns and, and the variation of those returns and my other income sources, what can I live off of? But the key is going to be, you know, how can we fund our baseline living expenses. And so hopefully we still have Social Security, right? You know, people talk about Social Security going away and that that um, we're depleting that, you know, trust fund, if you will. I think that very may well be true, and I'm not the most educated on the actual numbers behind this. But what I can see happening is that they're going to increase the age for full retirement age to receive your benefits. They're going to potentially put 
caps on income. You know, if you have over a certain amount of income during retirement, maybe you get your Social Security benefit reduced, which you can argue isn't fair. We're not going to get into the politics of it, but there are going to be things that they're going to put in place to decrease Social Security for the people that have have the money to, to fully fund their retirement. But what I think is the next step is going to be figuring out what you want to do that you enjoy that can provide you some baseline income, kind of this freelance economy, gig economy, whatever. And maybe you transition from doing a job that paid you a certain amount of money to a job that maybe pays you less money but gives you more flexibility to live your life. And then that along with the money that you've saved up, that you've invested over a long time period, and the other fixed income sources that you have, you can sustain your retirement over a four, your semi-retirement or your retirement over a 40, 50 year time period. Because the chances, again, it, you know, for people that are in their 30s or 40s right now, you know, if you retire at 60, you're still potentially going to have a 40, 50 year, um, depending on what happens with, you know, medicine and technology time horizon where you're going to need to create that income source for yourself. So if you're in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, and you still have this long time horizon before you would even consider retirement, unless you're in to the FIRE community and retiring very early and saving a massive percentage of your income so that you can do that, then you have time to develop a strategy to create a lump sum investment that can either be turned into some kind of guaranteed income source or the other route is to create an investment portfolio that you can withdraw from that you're keeping your withdrawal rate low enough that that is sustainable over a very long time period. But there's so many factors that are out of your control over the next you know, 20, 30, 40 years before you, you know, would go into retirement as we like to traditionally think of it, that you can really only do so many things. <laughs> and that starts with taking advantage of all of your tax deferred accounts right now. So taking advantage of your workplace retirement plan, taking advantage of individual retirement accounts, maxing those out, planning for tax diversification, taking advantage of after-tax accounts, pre-tax accounts, giving yourself flexibility because we don't know what the future holds for fiscal policy and where taxes are going to go. So you want to put yourself in a position now where you have some flexibility down the road. You want to develop a hierarchy for you know what is a lifestyle that you want to attain. So figure out how much you're spending today and is this something that you want to maintain if you were to stop working? So if you're accustomed to spending, you know, five, ten thousand dollars a month, whatever it is, that can give you insight to what is that number that you need to achieve over the next 20, 30, 40 years of saving and how much risk do you need to take on in your portfolio to achieve that number? And the numbers behind it are important. But at the same time, as is the point of this podcast, we want to get you to that point while still enjoying today. So it's about figuring out what's the right balance of living below our means now, saving for our financial future, providing us some kind of flexibility with our retirement accounts and planning for tax diversification down the road, investing, taking on enough risk so that we can actually make money on our money because if we're just holding cash then we're losing our purchasing power to inflation over time. So we can't do that. That's risky in itself. So we have to figure out a plan. And the future is unknown, but you got to take advantage of what the knowns are today. And so between now and when you retire 20, 30, 40 years from now, there's going to be so much that changes that I don't know that nobody knows as far as it relates to who knows, maybe by that point we will have, you know, greater social benefits. But at what cost? Greater social benefits cost more in taxes, so it's always a give and take. And so what I would stress for you is figuring out how to live for today, but plan for tomorrow. And that is where I'll end the podcast today. I hope you have a great rest of your week. Lastly, I want to remind you to do you. Because in a world of increased commoditization, Nobody can replicate you.
This podcast is for informational and entertainment purposes only and should not be relied upon as a basis for investment decisions. None of the information provided in this podcast is intended as investment, tax, accounting, or legal advice.